Junctional hemorrhage occurs in areas of the body where an ordinary tourniquet would not be effective. Generally, this is the area where the torso meets the extremities. Inguinal hemorrhage occurs where the legs meet the body in the femoral artery. Axilla hemorrhage occurs where the arms meet the body. The SAM Junctional Tourniquet, or SJT, is a life-saving device that can be utilized for both inguinal hemorrhage control and pelvic immobilization. In simulated cases with cadaver and training mannequin models, the SJT has been applied to control hemorrhage in less than 25 seconds. The main components of the SAM Junctional Tourniquet include the belt, buckle, target compression device, or TCD, and the hand pump. Training time needed prior to field use of the SJT is minimized because many components are already familiar to medics, such as the hand pump, commonly used to inflate blood pressure cuffs, and the belt, which is a modified SAM pelvic sling. The TCD is the mechanism that, when inflated, provides pressure to occlude blood flow and control hemorrhage. It is easy and quick to inflate using the hand pump. To control inguinal hemorrhage, slide the belt underneath the patient. Position the TCD over the area to be compressed. If the TCD will be directly on an open wound, use sterile gauze or a hemostatic dressing to cover the contact area. Hold the TCD in place while connecting the belt buckle. Then, secure the belt by pulling the brown handles away from each other until the buckle secures. You will hear an audible click. Secure the excess strap by pressing it firmly back down onto the Velcro on the belt. You may hear a second click once the belt is secure. Now utilize the hand pump to inflate the TCD until the hemorrhage is controlled. You can remove the hand pump from the TCD and use it to inflate an additional TCD if needed for bilateral hemorrhage. The secured belt provides 150 newtons of circumferential force to the patient's pelvis, which is the amount of force proven to properly reduce a pelvic fracture, an injury often associated with inguinal hemorrhage. Now, let's watch a real-time application. Hemorrhage in the upper arm or axilla area cannot be controlled with an ordinary tourniquet. The major blood vessels supplying the arm are downstream from the subclavian artery. These are the axillary and brachial arteries. Applying direct pressure to the subclavian axilla artery just below the clavicle will stop the hemorrhage. Because these arteries lie somewhat deep beneath the clavicle, a special extender must be used to contact and apply pressure to those arteries. To control axilla hemorrhage, apply the SJT to the patient under the arms as high as possible. Place the D-ring on the injured side, aligning it with the side of the neck. Connect the buckle and secure the SJT by pulling the brown handles apart until you hear a click. Maintain tension and fasten the strap in place by pressing it down on the Velcro. Next, locate the auxiliary strap and the TCD with the extender. Attach the extender to the TCD prior to application. The extender should be placed so that it is parallel to the clavicle when placed on the patient and should align with the tube. Then, place the TCD on the strap on the center of the light brown Velcro with the tube and hand pump extending out. Connect the auxiliary strap to the D-ring on the front of the SJT using the large clip. Connect the other end of the auxiliary strap to the cord on the back of the SJT using the small clip as close as possible to the patient's midline. Remove any slack by securely tightening the strap using the brown handle. The TCD with extender should be positioned under the clavicle and adjacent to the shoulder, with the extender parallel to the clavicle. Use the hand pump to inflate the TCD until hemorrhage stops. Additional hand pumps may be necessary with changes in altitude. Now let's show a real-time application without interruption.
Once the SAM junctional tourniquet is applied, the patient should be monitored as per your hemorrhage treatment protocol, and the device should remain firmly attached to the patient until reaching a definitive care facility. After the cause of hemorrhage is addressed by other means, the device can be removed from the patient by releasing the buckle or cutting the bell. To learn more, visit sammedical.com.